to a good start. This is a brand new venue for me. I've never set foot on the place, apart from a couple of times in the week just to come and have a look and bait up. But uh, it's actually the first time I've wet a line. And this is the result of a, a night's fishing, a cracking 23 pound common. I uh, appreciate going on to a new venue, can be pretty daunting. Lots to learn, trying to work it out very quickly. Um, what I'm going to do is get this fella back now and go over a few rigs and tactics that have helped me catch this fish and hopefully put a few fish on the bank for yourselves as well. So on a new water it's really imperative that you find the right spot to fish on. And this water we're on now is, is only three or four acres, really small, about 40 or 50 fish, there's plenty to go at, but it's incredibly weedy. And for that reason, I've opted not to use a marker float. I think, it, it, to be fair, it get clogged up um, and it limit the feel on the roll when I'm pulling back because there's so much weed. So a weapon of choice is a tiny little lead, literally ounce and a half, two ounce, all you need. Um, tapered profile, that means the you see I've put like a little sleeve above it as well, that means the weed will skip off it, it won't clog around the lead, you'll get a few, when you cast out you can fill the bottom and get a few, and lift the rod tip up and get another drop and, until you get sort of weeded down, but that way it's a far more efficient way of marking out the swim. Um, when you find your spot you can put a marker on and check the depth, but I can generally tell with this on the countdown how deep it is. It's, out here it's about sort of four foot deep. Um, and it's took me quite a while to find a little strip of silt in between weed beds, um, which I took the fish off as well. So all I've done literally is when I got here, just flick this little head out, find an area, and then usually I'd have two um, sticks of rod length apart to count the, real, the rod turns. This swim is really, really tight and I can't get aware of that. So what I've done, gone back to old school and just walk it out down the bank. It's only 40 or 50 yards. So uh, walking it down the bank, sticking the ground, clip all your rods up and you're right on the marks then. Uh, so that's, uh, that's my top tip for, uh, especially in new water, get a little lead out, have a feel about and minimal disturbance. Just starting to uh, lose the light now, getting dark ever so quickly now, we're edging into winter. Just put a few more baits out and reposition that rod what I had the fish on and uh, lo and behold, just on dusk, a tench has come in, took the bait, screaming take and gone through my other rod. So I uh, had to re redo both, which I'm doing now. Um, done my hook point over as well. So what I'm doing is actually putting on a, a new hook, uh, fish rigs where you can take the hook off really, really quickly and put, uh, put a new one on. So. Um, Less for, especially on a winter's night when your hands are cold, dead simple. So I'll show you that in the morning. But fingers crossed, we'll see what tonight brings. It looks uh, looks okay. It's going to go, go down to a bit uh, a bit chilly tonight, down to probably about one or two. So it might be a bit of frost in the morning. But fingers crossed, there'll be uh, be a fish waiting. But uh, we'll see. So until then, see you in the morning. few guys have a busy uh, work life like myself, I struggle to get down in the day to fish or to put bait in, but I think it's well worth the effort. If you can come down on the evening and just trickle a little bit in, it doesn't have to be loads, 50 baits, 60 baits, just on a spot regularly, summer or winter, you know, reap the benefits of that, you get these fish coming in. Um, it's easy on the pocket as well, a kilo of bait last year, a couple of weeks baiting, and uh, I just took the opportunity to do it here, and it's paid off straight away with a fish. So. Uh, you can get down in the evening guys, more power to you, Better beat staying at home and the big plus is all the birds don't nail your bait either so uh, yeah get down get some bait in and uh, hope we put a fish on the bank. Very, very 
cold night for myself and uh, very quiet as well. James just down the way though managed a couple of cracking fish. He had a, a 25 pound mirror, absolute belting fish, uh, taken from sort of fishing over to a far bank margin. Um, and also had a small common in the night round about sort of 12, 13 pounds, just fishing sort of halfway. So uh, really good to see a few fish on the bank. Say all quiet for me and myself, but um, still got the day. Sun's poking his head out now, it's warmed everything up a little bit, so uh, we'll see what happens a bit later on. But just going on to um, rigs, extremely important obviously for any venue you go on to. Um, this is the one that I favour um, for this type of fishing. We're fishing over a little bit of um, debris on the bottom, it's a bit silty, so a pop up, especially for this time of year when there's a lot of leaves on the bottom, absolutely brilliant. I say this rig really knows, needs no introduction. Hinge stiff rig, this is my version of it. Um, slightly different, same mechanics, same um, most of the same components as well. And I'll just run you through exactly what I'm doing slightly differently. If I just start um, at the link loop end, little link loop goes on to most rig uh, components, so you can quick change in a flash, really easy. Uh, the boom section, that can be used out of a variety of things. Um, if it's a really firm bottom, I have used mouth trap. Um, IQ2 is a brilliant all rounder. In this case, I've got some. Uh, End trap semi stiff, it just pushes the hook bait away nicely. Um, just running down the hook link, I've got a, uh, a little sinker on there which is uh, encased in um, some dark matter just to again keep that loop nice firmly on the bottom. Um, and then we've got a tiny micro swivel here which again is covered in um, dark matter and that's, uh, that's the weight to obviously sink the pop up. And I find it much better to put the, the sinking, the dark matter, around the swivel end there. Um, this gives a much better degree of movement for the uh, for the hook and the hook bait. If the weight was on the um, shaft, if you like, or the section of mouth trap there, then basically that's a lot of weight that's got to spin. Whereas at the moment it's literally just that little bit can spin all the way around. It's got total freedom of movement. Um, you notice I'm doing something slightly different. I've got a doubled up 25 pound mouth trap round in a loop that gives me my curve. And what that enables me to do is change the hook very, very quickly after a fish or if a tench or if a bird picks up your bait and dulls your hook point, you can change that quick as a flash and your pop up as well. So it's a great little rig for ease and quickness as well. Um, so that just goes up in D fashion. Uh, the 25 pound mouth trap actually grips the eye as, as it comes out the hook so that will not slip. I've cast that 130 yards, brought it back in the morning and it's still in that position. And you can also tell if you've been done as well, because if that's been pulled down, you know that something shook the hook. So it's a really good little indicator as well. Um, the bait, a, a mega buoyant pop-up, goes about the same for this sort of rig. I've got a little micro swivel in there, again, just to give the movement, and that's just tied on with a bit of dental floss. So it makes for a nice, neat, compact little rig. Change it in seconds, and I say, it catches absolutely stacks of fish all over the country, so uh, well worth a go. the result a cracking little fully scaled absolutely perfect fish not a mark on it really had a great time here down here with Jimmy Armstrong uh, both had a couple of fish apiece now just on really simple tactics really finding where to present the bait putting a good quality bait in and the result is a few fish from a new venue now I for one definitely coming back sometime soon what a cracker <laughs>